I am presenting Union Gospel Press's Sunday School Lesson Number 1, Start of the Fall Quarter, Sunday, September 1st, 2024. The lesson is entitled, Daniel Honors God's Law. Lesson text comes from Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 through 21. Related scriptures are 2 Chronicles 36, 5 through 8, Psalm 119, 105 through 112, Daniel 1, 1 through 7. The place is Babylon. The time is 506 B.C. The book of Daniel portrays the life of Daniel, but the main character of the narrative is Daniel's God. We witness God as the one planning and executing world events. He is never taken by surprise or caught unaware by any circumstance. This remains a comforting truth today. Daniel trusted God in every situation. His confidence was grounded in God, regardless of the events surrounding him. Daniel spent at least 70 years away from his homeland of Judah. He served under various foreign leaders, including Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Cyrus, and Darius. During his life, he was a faithful servant of earthly kings, but ultimately he served his God. Our lesson this week centers on Daniel's early days in Babylon after he was taken captive. Today's aim, facts, to understand the culture and politics of Daniel's time and recognize the influence that, that had on young Daniel. Principle, to appreciate the resolve of a young man caught up in a world of idolatry. Application, to confirm that God is in control regardless of our feelings or circumstances and to encourage believers to stand up for their faith Trusting God for the outcome. Illustrating the lesson. Daniel's special diet led to his improved countenance. The reason, however, was not the diet. The Lord rewarded Daniel's dedication and faithfulness. By rejecting the king's food, Daniel was still able to say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 23, 1. Practical points. One, when you commit to obey God, expect that commitment to be tested, Daniel 1, 8. Two, stand for, for God and watch him intervene on your behalf, verses 9 through 10. Three, when possible, believers should cooperate with those in authority, but we cannot compromise the truth of God's word, verses 11 through 14. Four, God enables us to obey him even in challenging circumstances, verses 15 through 16. Five, God gives us skills and knowledge to use for his glory as we yield our hearts to him, verse 17. Six, the wisdom of God is superior to the practices of the world, verses 18 through 19. Seven, God has placed you where you are for a reason, so trust in him, verse 21. Golden text. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, Daniel 1, 8. Today we have three lesson outlines. The first is convictions tested, Daniel 1, 8 through 10. The second is convictions maintained, Daniel 1, 11 through 16. And the third is convictions rewarded, Daniel 1, 17 through 21. Introduction. In the year 722 BC, Assyria conquered the northern kingdom of Israel and took tens of thousands into exile. We never read about any return of the people from that captivity in their own land. The kingdom of Judah, however, went into captivity in three separate deportations and eventually came back in three returns. The deportations, each under King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, are summarized in 2 Chronicles 36. The first occurred in 605 BC, verse 7. Daniel was taken to Babylon then. The second occurred in 597 B.C., during which Ezekiel was taken, verse 10. 
The third deportation occurred in 586 BC when Babylon raised the city of Jerusalem and destroyed homes, palaces, walls, and the temple. Verse 17. The book of Daniel opens with Daniel and he, his three friends in Babylon. The palace master gave them Babylonian names, Daniel 1, 7, though they were not concerned about them. Instead, they had another issue to face. Convictions tested, Daniel 1, 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. For therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince, and, prince of the eunuchs. Verse 10. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who have appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse likening than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Personal Resolve, Daniel 1, 8. One of the emphasis in the book of Daniel is the sovereignty of God over individuals and nations. Kenneth Gangle summarizes, Daniel wastes no time getting to his theme, the sovereignty of God. The captivity of 605 BC was not a victory for Nebuchadnezzar any more than the crucifixion was a victory for Satan. The God of creation decided that year that a new chapter would open in his personal world book. So he sent Jehoiakim to defeat and defile, to defeat and Daniel to Babylon. Throughout this book, we are reminded of the truth expressed in Isaiah. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. 40, 15, 17. Daniel was in Babylon because of God's orchestration of the situation, but that did not mean he was free of the responsibility to serve his God righteously and faithfully. Daniel showed no concern over the secular education or being given a Babylonian name, for he knew who he was and how God saw him. The prescribed diet, however, posed a problem. It violated God's law. Israel was told to never worship false gods. Exodus 34, 15 warned that when the inhabitants of the land sacrificed to their gods, they would invite the Israelites to eat the meat, thereby including the Israelites in their false worship. It is probable that Daniel's objection to the Babylonian food and drink was that it had been dedicated to false gods. To eat and drink this would be a violation of the convictions he drew from God's law. He requested, therefore, to be excused from that prescribed diet. The Babylonians worshipped a, a pantheon of gods and goddesses. They considered each deity to embody or represent a different natural phenomena, like storms or the sea. When a natural event failed to occur as they hoped, the Babylonians considered this to be an indication that the god or goddess associated with it must be displeased with them. This opposed what Daniel and his friends believed. They did not worship a number of gods and goddesses. They praised the Lord alone. They understood that only he is God and worthy of praise. Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 7, Psalms 96, 4 through 5. They retained their dependence and hope in God Almighty and did not rely on the king and his food. Personal Integrity, Daniel 1, 9 through 10. In these verses, we see not only the integrity of Daniel, but also that of the chief of the eunuchs over Daniel and his friends, verse 3. 
Aspenaz observed that Daniel was not naturally a troublemaker, so he developed kind feelings toward him. This was God's sovereign work in Ashpenaz's heart. God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs, verse 9. Therefore, he did not base his rejection of Daniel's request on negative personal feelings toward him. Ashpenaz revealed his loyalty to the king in his response to Daniel. There was certainly fear involved, but he did not express any bad feelings toward Nebuchadnezzar. After all, as a servant of the king, he could not make such decisions on his own, especially if they were contrary to what the king had ordered. Ashpenaz had a responsibility to carry out. Although he felt kindly toward Daniel, he did not dare change the king's rules. Ashpenaz's argument was solid. He feared Nebuchadnezzar because he knew if he took matters into his own hands, there would be serious consequences. The king specifically ordered the diet in question. The king ordered that the best food and wine be given to the young men because he thought this would best prepare them for serving him. He gave no thought to the fact that it had been dedicated to his pagan gods for that was just a part for, of his religious culture. Ashpenash argued that if Daniel and his friends did not eat the king's food, they would not look healthy, and he would face deadly consequences. Daniel's request was bad for all of them. Convictions maintained. Verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had sent over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Verse 12. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Verse 13. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Verse 14. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. Verse 15. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Verse 16. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. Special requests, Daniel 1, 11 through 13. Some of us have learned that when those in authority over us to do something objectable, we should offer a creative alternative that would allow us to act in good conscience while satisfying the demands of those over us. By proposing an alternate solution, we can make it easier for those over us to change their plans. This, in turn, makes it easier for us to maintain our convictions. Daniel could not submit because he knew his actions would violate his spiritual convictions. So, he devised a creative alternative and presented it to the steward appointed over him by Ashpenaz. Daniel proposed a 10-day test in which he and his friends would be on a diet of vegetables and water. The word translated pulse in verse 12 refers to things that are sown, so it is possible that grains were included in Daniel's proposal. It was the meat and wine apparently sacrificed to pagan gods that presented the real problem. In the law, there is no mention of unclean vegetables. If given only vegetables, then Daniel and his friends could eat anything set before them without objection. This would resolve the issue as long as the young men continue to appear healthy to the steward and King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel left it up to the steward to make final decision 
after the test diet was completed. He proposed that the steward examine them carefully to see how healthy they looked. If they were not up to par, the steward could determine the next action. Daniel was confident in his protective God, but we know from the rest of the book of Daniel that if necessary, he and his friends would have been prepared to suffer the consequences of obeying God rather than man. 3, 16 through 18, 6, 1 through 10. Special requests, Daniel 1, 14 through 15. This time, the steward granted Daniel's request, perhaps because he saw a way out of the dilemma. At a time frame was established so he could always order them to return to the royal diet if he needed to. There was still plenty of time to get the young men in shape if the experiment failed. For the next 10 days, Daniel and his friends were served what Daniel had requested. After they stood before the steward to hear his decision about the matter. The result was that Daniel and his friends appeared healthier than all who were given the diet ordered by the king. Verse 15. Here the word countenances refers to their general appearance, not just their facial features. They looked very good with no evidence of malnutrition or loss of muscular strength. In fact, the text records that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah appeared better fed and stronger than those who ate the king's diet. Although there is no mention of God in this text, we can clearly see his controlling hand. Ten days is a relatively short time for significant results. God honored these young men for their willingness to take a stand on what they knew was right. How strong would we be in the face of a similar situation? Special treatment, Daniel 1.16. As soon as the steward saw the results in the young men, he permanently withheld the king's diet and continued giving them the vegetables and water they had requested. It is evident that God oversaw the entire process and allowed them to receive special treatment. We do have to wonder whether these four were the only young captives willing to take such a stand. There is no indication anywhere in Daniel that others were willing to follow this standard. The change of diet was just the beginning. God did much, did much more for them since they boldly stood for him. All four of them were given an unusually high degree of knowledge and skill in learning. Evidently, they quickly understood the Babylonian literature, astrology, and science they were taught. Convictions rewarded. Verse 7. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Verse 18. Now at the end of the days that the king has said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 19. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. Verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Verse 21. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. God gives wisdom, Daniel 1, 17. God not only blessed the young men physically, he also gave them wisdom, the ability to see life and its events as God sees them. Since Nebuchadnezzar was preparing them for important positions in his kingdom's administration, this gift of wisdom was very important. Daniel also was given an additional gift, the supernatural ability to understand visions and dreams. This divine giving ability sets the stage for much of what comes later in the book. He had an ability that led him to stand before kings and proclaim major movements to come facing Nebuchadnezzar Daniel 1 18 through 19 
After the young men had been trained, Nebuchadnezzar probed their understanding in various areas. Have you ever stopped to consider how educated Nebuchadnezzar must have been? Only someone with education and intelligence could personally interview young men like this and recognize them to be far superior in intelligence and understanding to all the others he interviewed. The chief of the eunuchs himself, probably still Ashpenaz, took them to Nebuchadnezzar. He had been the one in charge of the entire program, even though he had a steward working under his authority with these particular men. Ashpenaz was ultimately the one accountable to the king and was responsible for the presenting the young men to him. The results were conclusive. Among all those in training, none compared to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were the ones who entered the king's court. It will become clear in the rest of this book that their secular education did not damage their spiritual standards. Daniel resolved in his heart not to defile himself with anything outside God's will. In pressing Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 1, 20 through 21. No matter what subject Nebuchadnezzar explored with the young men, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Verse 20. This phrase is an idiom denoting superior intelligence and understanding, not a literal observation. While the men were naturally intelligent, God enhanced their intellect with extra measures of understanding. The mention of, magi of magicians and astrologers in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom is a reference to two categories of wise men and counselors. They were not always wise and were sometimes very poor counselors. In a secular government, we cannot expect every individual to have godly wisdom and understanding about life. Daniel and his friends began immediately in the service of Nebuchadnezzar. There is a greater focus on Daniel than on the others, though they do not disappear from the book entirely, Daniel 3. Daniel was just beginning a long time of royal service. Here is a man who lived a godly life and, as a result, was used in the lives of many other people, including world rulers. The faith of these men was not pretentious, but real and sincere. They had a confidence in God that enabled them to stand for him in the face of all tests. Questions 1. Why were Daniel and his friends concerned about the king's diet, but not their Babylonian education or names? 2. Whose integrity is displayed in Daniel 1, 9 through 10? Three, why did Ashpenaz say he could not grant Daniel's request? Four, how did Daniel offer a creative alternative in his request? Five, why did the steward agree to this offer? Six, after the diet was changed, what were the results for the four men? Seven, who interviewed these men and what did he discover about them? Eight, how did the gift of wisdom set these men apart from others? Nine, what idiom describes their superior intelligence? Ten, what does the obedience of the men reveal about their faith? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, September 1st, 2024. Thank you for listening. God bless.